Okay. Yeah. We good? Well, folks, we're live here with the Cow Sense and Science Live Report here at the National Angus Convention, and I'm Cody Sankey, joined by Justin Hergenreiter and Brad Johnson, and uh, we just want to come here today. You uh, you hear us talk a lot about this uh, Cow Sense and Science, and we've been covering that this fall, and we've started this live report, and we recently launched uh, one of our new videos that we put out about Cow Sense and Science. And uh, it's really the backbone of what Gen X is. And we want to spend a little time here at the National Angus Convention to discuss with you about what that really means and some of the bulls in our lineup that fit that. And, Justin, you know, we talk about cow sense and science a lot. In your eyes, what, uh, what does that mean to you as an employee of Gen X and someone who raises cattle when someone says cow sense and science? Yep. So a big one for us, uh, it, fertility is the biggest one, uh, especially plays into a, a big part of what we do at home. Uh, my brother and I run some commercial cows there on the front range of Colorado. Uh, I guess a term that we always, uh, we don't throw around lightly, but we use a lot is uh, if you can't get her bred, none of the rest of it matters. So uh, we're very, very high on our preg check and fertility from there. Uh, we start at the ground. Cattle got to be good from the ground up. That's where that base width starts. Uh, making a good foot and making cattle that are productive not only on the range but at the bunk too. So uh, some things that we live by at home and some things that we really, uh, we really help our customers push into their herds too. And I think, Justin, what you hit there was a lot of the cow sense things that maybe aren't measurable. Absolutely. Uh, we don't have a number to quantify them, uh, but they're very important to a, a rancher's a bottom line and what makes yep. the, the needle move. And, Brad, in your eyes, as someone that, that's been with Gen X as long as anyone I know, you were here when cow sense and science was developed and you've been a part of it along the way. You know, what's it mean to you as someone uh, that's been here? Yeah, thanks, Cody. I mean, to me, even uh, within the science side of things, to me, it's all about balance. And, you know, that's kind of like you, you look at some of the traits that we breed for today are, are somewhat antagonistic, and it, it's balancing those traits, too, along with the cow sense stuff you talk about. So, you know, it, it's to me, it's, it's whether you... Uh, you want to breed for performance or carcass or maternal or whatever. It's, it's making a balance of all of that and, and making cattle that generate, generationally are better each time we, we, we calve a cow and make that next generation. So it's, it's all about balance, in my opinion, in terms of cow sense and science. You know, the neat thing about that video, and I hope uh, those of you that are watching have, have seen it. We had it on Facebook, and uh, you can go back and watch it on YouTube channel. Uh, I think it really hits home about what we are as Gen X because Absolutely. Brad and I on the sire procurement side, we we this is a something we take very personal uh, that we we strive to put our heart and soul in every bull that we bring in. And Justin, I know when you're breeding cattle for customers, it's the same way of selecting the right bulls. But when we're out there, Brad and I, we travel a lot of miles. It's not easy to get uh, Delta Platinum Medallion, but Brad and I strive each year to to make sure we see every bull's mother that we buy, the feet, the udders, those things are important. When we put a bull into Gen X, they have to measure up to those things. So, you know, those are important to us. Um, you, you hear it, we're gonna continue to, to beat the drum about cow sense and science because that's who we are and, and what we do. And, you know, the opportunity we have here this morning at Angus Convention to visit with producers from around the country, it's exciting. If you're coming to Fort Worth, we want you to come by the booth and see us. If you're already here, uh, stop in and, and visit with us about it. But some of the bulls we wanted to run over this morning, some of the bulls that, that are up, uh, exciting bulls in our lineup that really have an outstanding future that m hit the cow sense and science right at its core. Brad, <clears throat> leading off, there's, it's hard to get around DB Iconic as the bull that stepped right to the plate. Yeah, absolutely, Cody. I mean, Iconic is that type of bull. He epitomizes cow sense and science to me because uh, that's a bull that on paper is just off the charts. Uh, but you, you take a look at him in Billings or, or uh, you know, anytime you can see his video or you take a look at the bull in the flesh and he's everything that uh, he's a, a lot of what we'd want to put together physically. He just has that presence, has that power. Uh, and then on paper, you just you can't get around the bull. A really impressive bull from a terms of yearling weight standpoint. Uh, carcass merit's awesome, and his index power is just unreal. So a multifaceted, really good bull that, that we're really proud to have in the lineup and has been extremely popular in sales thus far, uh, whether it's guys, uh, guys breeding or flushing both. Uh, iconic seeing heavy, heavy usage both ways. You know, the neat thing about Iconic, he's been used all across the board in America. You drive a lot of miles to find a bull that, that has that look 
visually and matches up on paper. A bull that, you know, tremendous spread from birth to yearling. A bull that um, 1.5 on marbling uh, out out of this world from that standpoint and still looks like a, a million bucks. He stands in Billings. If you get to Montana, I encourage you to go look at him. Uh, a bull that you see his new photo and he's every bit as good as that picture. Uh, early calf reports on the ground. I've had some at my house. I know what they're like. They're some of the most impressive baby calves I've I've seen around the countryside at two months of age. And I know that's that seems odd to say. And people say, well, I want to see them at two years of age. And I do too. But I think the you know, when you start out this good, that young, it's, uh, it's exciting for him. And, you know, Justin, another bull that maybe comes at a little different angle, uh, but uh, another stunner son in our lineup is Standout. I know a bull that you've used personally, a bull that came in iconic and Standout, uh, not even far off in their cane codes. Brad, I think we bought them about a week apart. But um, for those two bulls to be kind of anchors in our cow sense and science, um, it's pretty exciting. But, Justin, tell us about your experience with Standout. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think, again, I'm not going to take anything away from Iconic. Uh, I think Standout is, a, again, another one of those bulls that really hits the, the nail on the head for cow sense and science. Uh, we did use him straight across on our personal fall, fall cows at home. Uh, probably the biggest thing and the biggest takeaway is that 104 preg check. Uh, that deal's real. That bull will settle cows. Uh, gets it done extremely well from that end. Uh, double digit cavities, a bull that's probably just, he's gonna keep you right in the middle of the road and keep you out of the ditches. Uh, top 20% in a lot of his traits as you're viewing there on his EPD profile. Uh, the calves that we've had at home, they come easy. Calf vigor was phenomenal. Uh, the same way, you know, they're just late August babies, but they do have a lot of profile. Uh, really, really wedge made steers and heifers both. They've really got a kind of a neat, cool hip in them. Uh, wide base cattle with still plenty of belly. We're ex extremely excited about him. So uh, for a bull to come in, be double digit cavities, uh, high fertility, a bull that makes a lot of semen, uh, I think that he'll see a lot of use in some big heifer projects starting coming next spring of 2022. Yeah, and I, I think a bull that, you know, you've used him commercially acceptable, mm -hmm. but I think um, from a seed stock standpoint, a bull that you look at that um, we talk about a lot of times is um, the whole is greater than the parts. Absolutely. And I think a bull that uh, puts a lot of pieces together to make a, you know, a very outstanding whole piece to the puzzle. A uh, bull that's balanced across the board numerically, outstanding visually, has a good mother behind him. Really um, you know, you see this bull uh, stout made big top, big rear end, body, mass, good feet, structure, has a look. Uh, has a proud herd bull look. Absolutely. We're excited to get a new picture of him here. It's going to be out in our new book. But another bull that's standing in Billings, I think it has an exciting future. And like you said, 104 preg check. Um, you know, I always say the Big most deal. important trait in beef production is reproduction. And uh, <laughs> if you can't get them bred, uh, you just will be raising horses. So... Um, but um, right, <laughs> yeah. Well, if you come by the booth, you can get your bumper sticker that I'm very proud of. Keep your mind open, not your cows. So come by and see us. And uh, our director of marketing, Sarah Thorson, will autograph it personally and hand it to you. But uh, Brad, you know, we talked about a couple of a stunner sons it up, but we've got another bull that um, probably a little different pedigree than those two, but probably as unique individuals we brought into our lineup in a while and that's E&B Wildcat. Yeah, Wildcat is, is one of the really big acquisitions we've had lately. Um, bull that fits in right on the same page with Iconic really nicely. Uh, I think Wildcat is one of those really cool bulls on paper and physically that balance that I talked about earlier in the cow sense side of things. Uh, this is a bull that, that from a spread standpoint is fantastic. Uh, outstanding carcass merit at a, a 1.3 and huge indexes. Uh, but where this bull really shines, Cody, is this bull is an awesome, uh, outstanding foot and leg bull. This is a really nice uh, heifer pregnancy bull. So he's checking a lot of boxes there uh, in his EPD tabulation, uh, but also a bull that when you get on and evaluate him on the hoof, uh, there's a lot to like there as well. Like I said, uh, to me, it, it's always about uh, he's a really smooth made, correct bull, uh, extremely good at the ground, and, and a little extra size to the bull, and, and we're okay with that. I think, uh, you know, this is going to be a really nice mating tool. We're going to follow up uh, with Iconic really hard with uh, with Wildcat, and I think he's a, a really nice next step, high-end high end acquisition. So the Icon uh, Wildcat Bull, 
Uh, we're real excited about that one. Yeah, the unique thing about Wildcat, I think, is if um, you know you see him in person, obviously he checks all the boxes visually, but you you sort that bull on paper, and about every way you sort, he's about the only bull that shows up in the Angus database. Uh, over 80 for M, um, high C, high B, he's got the foot. Uh, claw and angle that's in the elite percentile, elite heifer pregnancy, a calving yeast bull, you know, and maybe the best attribute to him, Brad, is this confidence plus mother. Uh, we've been around this program. I have a herd full of them. Maybe the most heavily used Gen X bull I've had in time is confidence plus, and the daughters are outstanding. You know, she was recently the high seller in the Benoit's fall sale to Deer Valley. Uh, JP and those guys down there know a good one when they see him. They made a trip out there to get her ac- acquired into their herd, and you're going to hear a lot more about Wildcat's mother. You're going to hear a lot more about Wildcat. Um, I really think he's a dynamic uh, duo with Iconic on that one-two punch back and forth of those bulls. Uh, so we're excited. If you haven't got some Wildcat semen or heard about him, be sure and look him up because I always get the question, what do I want to use to be on the front side of something? And I'd say he's the one coming for. He's coming like a freight train down the tracks. So, Justin, we'll switch gears a little bit. Back yeah. to you, a bull that... You know, he's another one of those, um, the hole is greater than the parts kind of bull. It's just it's, um, SR Silverado from the Strowmans in North Dakota. Aaron and his family do an outstanding job. You've seen the bull, seen his mother. Tell us about uh, what you think about Silverado. Yeah, uh, Silverado was probably a unique trip. Uh, one of my uh, early trips to North Dakota, I guess, with Brad. It was, uh, it was cold that day. <laughs> I think that's putting it lightly. Uh, But we had the chance to go out and actually see this bull uh, before the sale and flat out, um, he was the one. Uh, This bull's good from the ground up. You really like the rib shape in him. Still a bull, it's got some power. Um, He's the right size for some guys around there. Uh, Again, another one of those bulls that's gonna keep you right down the middle of the road. Uh, Comes from an outstanding cow up there. Uh, Aaron Stroman, he's probably one of the ones, I guess I'm gonna tease on him just a little bit. He's harder on cows than anybody I probably have ever talked to. Uh, Not that we don't go see those mothers, but if Aaron tells you she's a good cow, she's dang sure a good one. So. Uh, had the chance to see her, but extremely excited to have him in the lineup. Uh, he's going to see a lot of use coming here next spring too, but uh, probably a little bit more on the moderate frame side, but a bull that really gets out and moves. Uh, super athletic, has all the right parts. Uh, extremely excited to use him in some heifer projects here start next spring. You know, the neat thing about Silverado is he's the one that um, you picked out visually mm-hmm. and um, <clears throat> when the genomic results came in, he hit there too, and he fits right into Plus. the genomic mindset or the Gen X mindset of both cow sense. Uh, the Stroman herd's based on logical cow productivity, cow sense selection process, and then has the science to back it up. A bull that you see in person, and he is, I, uh, he is a tank. I he mean, is, huge bodied big butted heavy bone good footed gets out and travels well like you say not the biggest bull but that's, that's the strowman's like that they want to they like an efficient bull that get, can survive in an arid and dry environment um, they strive in low maintenance uh, fault-free females and that's what he is out of rainfall out of the capitalist 028 daughter that we brad and i've seen outstanding utter and she's raised another i think there's a full brother to him coming on this year but um, if you're looking for that fault free no nonsense kind of a herd sire to use to make some daughters to keep back and that's silverado so brad back over to you a bull that um probably is shifting gears a little bit i call him a high octane herd sire and that's change maker yeah yeah that's a, a good way to categorize him cody i mean this bull is is horsepower i mean you see him in the flesh, you gotta love this bull. He'll hit he's you good. with a presence. Uh, the bull's just a, a stout made, massive bull. You, you look at him, he's got some top and some butt and some muscle in him and, and bone work and, and just has that look that has that eye appeal that, that, uh, that we're all looking for. Because, you know, buyers go in the bullpen and, and they're looking for the, that one that catches their eye, and this is the kind of bull that can make those. Um, you know, he, he's not a heifer bull by any means, but this is a really good cow bull to add power, uh, add some carcass merit. I think you like the bull a bunch uh, when you add up his indexes. Uh, that's a, a really impressive total package power bull. And so bred a little differently, uh, so we've got some option that way, uh, but big time, uh, big time dollar C and dollar B bull. 
Yeah, Changemaker is a unique individual. He carries a little more birth weight. Um, he's not a heifer bull, but I think if you want to add pounds and performance to a calf crop, he's a bigger bull. He'd be one of the bigger bulls in our lineup. Um, you know, so you keep that in mind when you mate him. Uh, if you like big cattle, you know what to do with him. If you don't, then you better protect him there. Uh, but I, when you study uh, numerically, high dollar M, high dollar B, high dollar C, high growth, uh, performance-oriented bull, good heifer preg. Uh, and then I just, he is, I would say, in um, when you go to, up to Billings of the Stud, you just look across a pen of 20 bulls, he stands out. He's, yeah, he he's, you can see him. You just say, now, what's that bull? And you want to walk over there and see him. He's got that proud herd bull look and upheadedness. So, you know, if you want to add some uh, some performance to your calves, you got some cows that need stoutened up, uh, look for Changemaker because I think he's exciting. Uh, he's got a bright future ahead of him. Justin, kind of shifting back over to you, we go with um, a bull that's been around the Gen X lineup a little bit, kind of earned his stripes the hard way, his Brickyard. A uh, bull that's been with us, came up through the system. I know you've used him heavily. What can you tell yeah. us about Brickyard? Yep. So Brickyard would be another one of the heavy use sires uh, for 2021 here, and especially in uh, commercial heifer projects. Uh, again, I'm going to beat that drum, that 104 preg check, uh, extreme customer satisfaction of there. So uh, regardless of the set of heifers that you've got, you use Brickyard, you're going to end up with a lot of pregnancies. Uh, double digit cavities. He's going to be that sleep all night, make every basketball game. Uh, come out the next morning and just start tagging calves. So uh, I've done a really nice job there. Uh, finally seeing some wet daughters in production. The wet daughters are really good. Uh, teat and udder quality seems to be up to par where we expected it from there. Uh, the cattle really have a lot of maternal in them from there. I know one of our test herds uh, up north actually said probably one of the biggest things that they saw there in first calf heifers uh, was the mothering ability. They stood over them, made sure they got them up, got them dry, and uh, got some colostrum in them too. So exciting things coming in. His first daughter's coming on. Uh, but if you've got a heifer project, you want to get them bred and you want to sleep all night and uh, wake up to, to babies in the morning, Brickyard and Dang sure be one to look at. Yeah, you know, from the Stewart herd there in Indiana, uh, Andrew and his family are kind of a, a no-nonsense breeder and markets bulls. Uh, both in Indiana and in Midland. Um, you know, we acquired Brickyard Private Treaty. They actually wanted to keep him back and use him in their own herd, and uh, luckily I was able to talk Andrew out of that. But, um, you know, 104 preg check, I mean, you know, it's going to pour it on their back. You can get them bred. Um, and then you go don't from there, that. you know, that, uh, <laughs> yeah, don't hold it. There is some, don't, don't hold us accountable to that <laughs> technique. But um, one of those bulls that, you um, you look just across the board, another one of those, the whole is greater than the parts, um, yep. numerically, visually, maternally, all the bells and whistles are there uh, for Brickyard. So, you know, a sleep all night calving East Bull that uh, brings a lot to the table. Brad, I don't know if there's a bull in our lineup that's more fittingly named than the next bull we're going to discuss, and that's Sitz Barricade. Um, when Jim and Joe named that bull, they, they began with the end in mind, I guess, but... Uh, he is a barricade, isn't he? That's about right. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. I mean, that's a bull from a body type standpoint that's extremely unique. I mean, a bull that's got mass and power, but also that soft center section, a uh, bull that's got a ton of flank and flesh and ability, and uh, he's a cow type changer is the way I'd, I'd sum him up pretty easily. And uh, I don't know if there's a, a bull that's, uh, that's more... Uh, hot right now in our lineup that's a bull that's catching some steam catching some popularity uh guys are going to put this bull back on those that that need to be stoutened up a little bit uh maybe that pretty cow that can't raise one quite stout enough uh and barricade i, I think has all the attributes uh, from the ground up because uh, he's an awesome foot bull uh, one it's of the very cool. best in the in the breed for for uh, claw and angle uh, on paper, but you see him, you evaluate his hoof. It's it's uh, really an outstanding uh, design there too. So, bull that from the ground up uh, is going to be that cow type changer, and I, I think uh, we're really pumped about what this bull is going to do here in the next couple of years. Yeah, I think really unique about Barricade, um, his mother was well received at the recent SITS female sale. Um, she was just a powerhouse of a female. You know, Barricade, there's a lot of double-digit Cavanese Angus cows that need um, need more substance and better feet. And uh, we know that as as, breed, as a breed of cattle, we got to work to improve those things. Barricade does that in one generation. He can add body, he can add mass, he can fix feet. Um 
the dude's feet, uh, you see it on our app. He's perfect footed. Um, just if you've got, you know, he's not a heifer bull. He carries a little more birth, but with that, you get the foot quality, the substance, the mass. Uh, the maternal, the dollar M is there, and you believe it. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot to come out of this guy in the future. I would tell you, if that's a bull you want to use, uh, you better order your semen early because it's uh, been a while since we had one This that gets uh, everyone lined up. Uh, we got Barricade and Iconic and Wildcat. We got them lined up here this year, so it's exciting uh, for us. But um, Justin, switch a gear here, kind of move back into the calving ease area for you, and that's um, Ellingson Rush, a bull that um, we acquired out of Ellingson's this spring, out of their spring sale. Uh, the Rough Rider son out of the couple advanced 28 daughter. Um, you know, you've seen this bull. You've seen him a couple yeah. of times. Uh, what's your take on Rush? He's cool. Uh, flat out in one word, he he is. Uh, when you guys have the chance to get this bull out and, and watch him move, uh, a bull that just strikes you from the side. Uh, he's got that herd bull presence, gets out extremely sound off of both ends. Um, if you guys have ever had the chance to use Rough Rider, uh, you know how awesome those cattle are from the ground up and from front to back. Uh, so to have a grandson come in, uh, double digit cavities to hit that again, like you said, out of that awesome advanced cow there too, uh, I think the sky's gonna be the limit for Rush. So excited about him, but another one of those bulls, super good footed at the ground, uh, a lot of ble belly, plenty of flank, uh, bull that's still plenty stout enough, but hopefully keep that double digit cavities off of that Rough Rider derivative too. Uh, I think that's a one-two punch for another Cavanese bull to come into the lineup here for uh, spring of 2022. Yeah, and it, you know, comes from Ellingson's. We interviewed Chad on our first ever Cal Sense and Science live report. Um, you know, that family eats, sleeps, and breathes it. Um, he's the cowboy sitting behind us right here on the, on the um, here. So we're making famous down here at Angus Convention. Um, but. Rush fits all the things we talk about. The, the cow sense side is there. The science side is there. Uh, you know, he is one that back by, you study his pedigree on the bottom side and you go back in there and bring it up and go down three, four generations. It's lock, stock, and barrel cow makers in there. So it's exciting to see where Rush, he was used back in Ellingson's herd this year. I think some real opportunity there. Brad, switching gears a little bit. Um, a bull that you are, you're passionate about. I know you you talk about him. You you wrote the footnote in the book about him. Uh, that's Architect from the Spicklers in North Dakota. Yeah, well, Cody, he's a bull that's easy to write a footnote about. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff going with Architect Way right good. now. It's a bull that comes to us from, from Justin and Sarah Spickler in North Dakota, and, and they're as excited about this bull as any of the, as they've ever had. Uh, and... You know, the, he's a bull that they held back and used in their herd as a yearling, uh, sold him as an 18-month-old bull, and that's how we brought him into our program. Uh, but a bull that, uh, you know, has excelled in his first calf crop. They've used him really hard. Uh, most of the calves there at Spickler's, but, uh, you know, has been heifer safe on the Cavanese side. Amazing growth uh, through the weaning stage thus far anyway. So I think he's pulling, at last I pulled it, it was a 106 ratio on his weaning weights, uh, which is just fantastic. Uh, but a bull that, that earns it honestly. I mean, it's the cow side, I think, that really anchors this bull. Um, he's uh, He's got, uh, I think it is, four generations. Uh, four of the six cows on the bottom side of his pedigree are are uh, pathfinders and, and donor females at Spickler's, which uh, really maternally oriented performance herd. And yeah, I mean, this is a bull that I, I am pretty pumped about. I think this is a bull that, you know, we liked him uh, at a young age, but this calf performance that he's he's got going on in his first calf crop uh, really says this is a bull that's going to take off and, and really going to back up uh, uh, the kind of curve bend and performance and power that we want in a bull. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's very possible with that maternal side that his best days are com to come with his, uh, with his daughters down the road. So a bull that puts a lot of stuff together, a bull that's been really popular because, I mean, on paper, he reads the part there too. So a uh, really nice spread bull, really neat indexes as well. Ar architect to me is pretty cool. You know, the neat thing about Architect is um, the, that spread that you get from zero to upwards of 100, almost 180, you know he's going to add growth, um, but he does it in the right in the right size of cattle. He's not a big bull, he's a heavy bull, and that's what I tell folks, you know, 
you, you weight in the right package is a good thing. You know, they say, well, I, 180 yearling weight may be too much, but I, you know, when you get it in the right stature and the right size and scale, you know, when they're when they're eight frame, that's not a good sign. He's not that. You can see in his photo. The thing I like about him, he looks like a herd bull should look. He's masculine headed. He's masculine about his crest. He's got stout hip and quarter. Not often do you see a bull with zero birth weight and have a rump like that in him. Uh, just. He, he's a cow changer kind of bull uh, that I think you're going to see a lot of good things out of coming forward. So we're excited about Architect uh, coming down the line. Justin, one that um, I know that you've been a part of and, and used in some projects or here and around in other places is Checkmate from the Shoss. Um, I, I, you know, there's a lot of Charlotte sons out there. He would be one that I would say would come to the front of the pack. If you see Checkmate, he's flawless in his design. Yep. Uh, a bull that's awesome to look at, uh, especially when you get the chance to study him. Uh, the same way standing up there in Billings, if you guys uh, do have the chance, make sure you hunt him out. Uh, bull gets out and moves just super athletic off of bull thins. Uh, really transmits that into his calves too. I know some of the first daughters that uh, we've seen, I guess I've seen weaned calves, uh, just easy flesh and big sweep and shape to their rib. Uh, heifers that are stout off of bull thins from there. Uh, still got some, uh, excuse me, some bone and some substance to them there. Uh, Going to be one of those use on cows to make cows type again too. So, uh, like you said, a Charlo son out of a beautiful, renowned daughter. Uh, I just think the epitome of that cow sense and science when you make them good from the ground up uh, and then combine that pedigree to go along with them. Uh, Checkmate's got a super bright future ahead of him. Yeah, there's been some checkmate calves. I know uh, McCurry Angus there in Kansas sold a slug of them, and they were the standout sire group there. And he's getting used, um, you know, by one of our best uh, guys that that sells our semen, Ross Beeson, just yep. raves about him in production there at his place in South Dakota. You know, the feet, the foot quality on checkmate, second to none. I mean, you just see the bull himself and then the, the cattle, whether they're in the pasture or in the feedlot, the feet are, are there. And, um, you know, if you know, you spend one day with Kelly Schaff, you know the how important it is to him about the females behind it. His renowned dam is is one of, if not the best renowned daughter at, at Schaff's. And, and I think uh, Kelly and Bob will tell you that when you go there, that she's an outstanding female. So... You know, if you're wanting to add a bull that uh, just balanced across the board in all measures uh, and outstanding and under quality, foot quality, body type, and kind is checkmate. Brad, um, a bull that uh, kind of was a real standout amongst his contemporaries at the first ever Cattlemen's Congress last year was um, Fry's True Grip. And we were able to procure him out of the National Angus sale down there. But, you know, I never... I'll never forget you and I walking through the, the makeup ring there behind the sale ring, and you had this look on your eye, and I had I said, you know, I didn't come here to buy a bull, but there's a bull, and you said, yeah, I know, I think I saw the same bull. He, it was True Grid. He, he was a stud. Yeah, it's funny you bring that up because that's exactly what I was going to say. You know how you just have that memory of, of when you first see a bull and he hits you? I mean, we've said that a couple times about other bulls, but it, it's that, that first impression uh, that true grit uh, makes on you. Uh, I'll, I'll not forget that about that bull in Oklahoma City. It's a, a bull that, uh, you know, the, the muscle shape and power in the bull and, and just uh, physical design overall is really impressive. And then when you got up closer on the bull and, you know, the bone work and the foot size is just really, really impressive bull. Um, and, you know, then, uh, you know, the bull does some neat stuff from an all-cross pedigree standpoint, does some nice stuff from a pet, uh, EPD standpoint, uh, you know, a lower birth weight bull that has some cavities potential. Uh, but, uh, you know, as well, just across the board, the balance that we've been talking about a lot today, uh, this is a bull that's got some really unique pieces and parts, uh, really impressive outcross type of bull uh, that I think is going to fit into our lineup really nicely going forward for guys that want a neat number set, outcross pedigree, and a really useful uh, set of numbers to go with. Yeah, you know, I he has that, that true outlier phenotype, uh, that striking look. He looks just like his photo. Uh, and then a bull that, you know, from Fry's there, North Dakota, another hardworking ranch and cow herd that, uh, you know, they no nonsense kind of females come out of there. And, and he's one, you know, we always hate to pigeonhole bulls in behind somebody, but he, he has that feeling to, to the way Insight was about just having the numbers, having the look, having the ability to hit a lot of different types and kinds, um, do a lot of good things. But, um, 
Justin, another bull that we brought in this year was Musgrave Exchange from the Musgraves there in Illinois. A Tahoe son out of a pay weight. Um, you know, a, a bull that you've seen him recently, a, a bull that I think numerically offers a lot of unique things. Um, a very high dollar in bull, a bull that has extremely good heifer pregnancy, has good foot scores. You know, if you've ever spent a time with Andy and Tyler, you know they're good breeders of cattle, a phenotype. They, they strive to do what, what we like in terms of putting all the pieces to the puzzle there. Yep, I completely agree. I uh, had the chance to see this bull in person, smooth made, correct, from the ground up. Uh, as you guys have heard me kind of talk, I'm a huge fan of those bulls that are just kind of that top 25%. I, uh, I like bulls there. I think that they're super use for t- useful cattle. Uh, excuse me, and I would agree, you ever have the chance to stop by and see those guys at that Musgrave program, uh, it's, it's a really cool p- program there too. It doesn't matter what pasture you go to. Uh, females are made right. They're useful. They're functional. Teat and utter quality is outstanding. Uh, I think there'll be a lot, a lot of use here for exchange coming up. Yeah, I, uh, I think there's a bright future for him out of the really good donor cow, the Caroline um, cow family. And so that um, is a, a really back power pack package there. But yeah. You know, we, we spent some time. We're going to kind of wrap this up. We've we've covered a set of bulls here. Um, if we didn't talk about the bull, it doesn't mean we necessarily don't enjoy the bull, but we only had slotted here 30 minutes. Um, come by and see us. We're excited about where we're headed with the Cal Sense and Science campaign. Uh, we eat, sleep, and breathe it. <clears throat> Everybody that works at Gen X, um, our, our reps all around the country, Justin, we'd be, we, um, we really have an awesome team. We put Absolutely. one together. Um, you know, our guys from Zane Berry in Montana to Gail Rippey in Nebraska. We've got Dustin Wooten in Kansas. We've got Matt Wrights here with us. He lives in Texas, and we just added a another guy in uh, Kentucky, Jason Crow. Yep. And uh, so we got a, a really good set of them. Then we got Ryan Ulrich in South Dakota. So um, if you visit with us or you're not going to make it to Angus, call those guys up and visit with them about it because uh, they're just as passionate about it as we are. So. Folks, we appreciate you taking your time out of your day. If you do come by, you can pick up your air fresheners. You can get Wildcat, Iconic, or Ashland so they can drive around in your car or keep your (laughs) mind open and not your cow's slogan bumper sticker. So come by and see us here at Angus Convention. But thank you for joining us this morning.